Loving, gracious Father, this evening as uh, we come together, uh, we are very conscious of uh, everything that happens in this world. And we live in, in, in the context of so many things that take place. And uh, in our country, we just finished a general election. And it was a very crucial one. And so, Lord, we we do know that you give us instructions on how to live as citizens in any country, as citizens of the kingdom, but also citizens of a nation. And so I pray that uh, as we discuss our uh, instructions that you've given to us through your apostle with regards to how we relate to leadership and authority in the country, we ask you to just guide us. May the Holy Spirit open our hearts to understand and uh, continue to help us be sensitive to these scriptures that guide us and lead us into uh, various ways we can be good citizens of the country. So in all of this, I just thank you and commit the study into your hands for your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Well, as I was... Uh, uh, mentioning and also in my prayer uh, you know we just went through a just general election I was just thinking about the state of nations if you look around the world look at the state of various nations and uh, the immediate thing that comes to my mind is you know uh, Sudan uh, Haiti uh, of course Palestine, Israel Ukraine uh, and uh, many others. Uh, and I, I, I asked myself the question, uh, you know, why are so many nations in such a crisis situation, such crisis point? And of course, there are many reasons for that. But I would think that leadership is one of the crucial aspects of a nation being you know, being led well. If the nation is not led well, uh, it suffers all kinds of uh, difficulties and problems. And so, um, sorry, so unfortunate that uh, citizens who live in certain countries have to face so much of struggle. And of course, all of us here in India know that uh, we were going through a crucial election. I mean, it was so many aspects to it. One of the major platform or other major issues was whether uh, uh, our constitution would be safe. <laughs> we wanted to make sure that uh, our constitution would not be desecrated. That was one big issue. And of course, many other issues which I think uh, the, uh, us, uh, that were not highlighted like you know price rise and various issues of uh, you know uh, civil unrest and uh, and uh, the crisis that each citizen have to go through so uh, uh, and here I am I was just looking at it from scriptures and uh, asking myself what what is my responsibility you know I, I'm not in government and uh, I don't plan to be in government. Uh, none of most of us may not want to be in government. I presume Bertie was one time in government <laughs> working for Air India, at least a government related, uh, uh, you know, uh, con uh, company. I don't know, Surya Murthy was in a public bank, and so you know, but each one of us, as citizens of a country, what is our responsibility? Uh, uh, and I, I was reminded of the Apostle's uh, instruction to Timothy. And so what I want to do is let me read that. And I, I'm presuming you have read it already, but let's read it together. And then I'll open it up for some thoughts that you would like to share. Later, I'll share some of my thoughts and then we can close with a general prayer for the nation. All right. So give me a moment as I bring up the scripture onto my screen. Let me just see if I can. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, uh, I think you can see the screen. Uh, yeah. Okay. Right. 
Notice this is from 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses uh, 1 to 4. And I'll just read as it is on the screen. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live quiet and uh, 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 we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness uh, and holiness. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. So, uh, like I said, I'll make some comments a little later, but notice uh, the emphasis that is being made on prayer. Uh, and this is uh, Timothy, written to Timothy as a pastor of a congregation. And I'm sure he was instructing everybody in his congregation to do this, to pray for all people, for especially kings and those in authority. Why? Because we may live peaceful and quiet lives. Uh, uh, in all godliness and holiness, that we might have opportunity to uh, manifest the godliness and the holiness of God. And so, and this is apparently pleasing to God, our Savior. And of course, he extends his grace to all people. All right, I'm going to just stop share, sharing there. And just, uh, you know, what, 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 what's your thoughts on that particular Injunction given to Christians uh, to pray for all, uh, all in authority. Of course, all people, specifically those in authority. How do you see that? What are the things that you see? Bhattram, go ahead. <clears throat> uh, added to the scriptures that you have just mentioned, which is so uplifting and so, uh, you know, uh, so so fair that God mentions all this to us, that he blesses us with these things. Uh, related, I would like to add a scripture which I can't quote exactly, but it says somewhere in the Old, Old Testament that the ruler of men should rule justly mm. in the fear of God, hating right. covetousness. If you heard me right, I'll say again, the ruler of men should rule justly in yeah. the fear of God, hating covetousness and about the leadership. That is a direct, uh, <laughs> that's a direct, uh, what do you say? It's directly speaking to uh, the, those in authority, you know? Yes. And, and so the Bible is not silent at all uh, in terms of what uh, God expects from those who are ruler. They have a great responsibility. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for adding that to uh, what I read in uh, uh, Timothy. How else would you see that i mean uh, i tried to ask the question you know why why is god asking us to do this i mean uh, we are not in we are not involved in government we are we are hardly will ever be able to come into any position of rulership and yet god says i want you to pray <laughs> yeah it, you know god has allowed these leaders to uh, govern us right so <clears throat> It's only uh, it's only right that as, as long as God has placed them over us, we need to pray that they will, you know, rule properly, behave, and not be tyrants and stuff like that. Right. Obviously, but yeah. I guess the question comes when they are really, really bad. Then what happens? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that that's exactly what was going through my mind. I mean, we have leadership. I mean, which is uh, I don't know what adjectives you can use, but so, so far away from what they are supposed to be doing. How do we pray for them? I mean, do, does God expect for us to pray for them? Uh, yeah. well, according to the scriptures, yes. I mean, I, I, I bite my tongue every time. I, I want to curse them. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> And many times I have to bite my tongue and say, uh, no, no, I don't think God expects of that. I mean, he says, pray for your enemies. <laughs> and there are so many who are enemical to the people of their own country. 
Yes, Bertie, go ahead. There's another scripture with, where God directly uh, speaks to man and says, uh, Yo, man, what does God require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, yeah. and to walk humbly? Yeah. To, to, uh, to, love, uh, to do justly, to love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. A direct uh, you know, speaking uh, to man, his responsibility. Right. Generally, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my. Yes. Uh, all of those are so, so, you know, uh, lofty in its uh, ideals. But then uh, we are so horribly far away from it. So, <laughs> so true. Yes. Right. Yeah, I know. You were just wondering. Yes. Uh, any other thoughts before I share a few things I pen down uh, so that it, it can come to our mind even as we pray a little later on. Let me go ahead and share some of the thoughts that I have and then uh, I'm sure it will probably prompt uh, you to also have some comments uh, that you may want to make. But as we read uh what the apostle's uh, instruction is. Uh, you know, he says, I urge then, first of all, you know, in other words, he is showing or giving some emphasis to this activity of prayer, right? Uh, so he urges us uh, to be involved in, in this activity of prayer uh, for one another, for all people, for leaders. So, uh, prayer is not just self-focused. Uh, uh, it should involve, you know, the ecosystem around us, you know, all, all, all of those involved, right? And, uh, and like I think we did just discussed, sometimes we feel reticent to pray for those leaders, uh, for leaders especially, because not only because they sometimes are so far away from uh, what is righteous behavior. But sometimes we feel inadequate or too small to pray or to make a difference, you know, in prayer. We sometimes feel, I mean, who am I to pray for presidents and kings and prime ministers, you know? Uh, will God really honor my humble prayer, you know, from, uh, you know, Vijayawada or from Hyderabad, <laughs> you know, uh, sometimes we feel as though our prayer will make no difference. But you know something? I don't know. I'm, this is not um, this is not to say anything about uh, my pious behavior or whatever. But there was one thing I had urged our congregation in Hyderabad, and I myself, every time I was reminded, I prayed that Lord. Uh, you know, <laughs> you are the one who appoints kings and takes away kings. And if it is your will, uh, we want good governance in our country. If you don't remove kings, at least uh, ensure that the kings, uh, what do you say, powers are restricted or checked, right? Because we are a democracy. And let there be such that there will be at least a check on these leaders and they will not have unbridled power to go do what they want. And in one sense, if you see the results of our general election, <laughs> I am so glad to you know say that they didn't even get the majority. Now they have to depend on coalition governments where the powers will be checked. And you know, I I, I just uh, I just feel that. God has had mercy on our country, and I'm sure the prayers of many of us have risen. So I, I, I just want to urge that don't ever think that your prayer doesn't matter, right? Uh, when you pray with a sense of earnestness, God hears. And of course, God is the one who answers in the way he knows is best. But I think we need to uh, remember that uh, our prayers is something that God uh, values and appreciates and very much takes into account in his decision making of course the king of the of the universe makes those decisions 
And I think it is also good for us to remind, as I was reading this, that uh, God is ultimately in control. You know, I'm reminded of uh, Matthew 28, the Great Commission. What does Jesus say? All authority in heaven and in earth now is given to me. Jesus has the authority, I mean, all over the universe. And so when we pray, we are praying to someone who has the authority over governments, kings and prime ministers and presidents, right? In other words, these kings or these prime ministers or presidents are not outside God's purview. They are not, you know, in one way acting as though, uh, you know, they have unbridled power, even though they behave so. Even Satan is under God's control, right? And so I think we should take, uh, we should take heart that God, the God we pray to, is in complete control, and we are praying to such a God who has the power to exercise His authority over all of these kings and and prime ministers and presidents. Another thought I'd like to just share from these uh, from the scripture is that. When we are told to pray, we are, being, we are also being asked to participate with God. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? God is saying, you know, participate with me. In other words, my decision making will also have a place for your prayers. So when we pray, God takes our prayers and, uh, you know, puts it into his decision making. I just feel, you know, that is such a privilege for us to be able to participate with God. You know, and that's why we pray, right? Uh, of course, we are, we, 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 do, we are not part of the government. We don't have any authority to make decisions that the government makes, except for putting your vote, you know. <laughs> uh, but God invites us to participate with him. In the governance of the world, ultimately, that's what he created us for. Have dominion over all the earth, he says. And of course, we have abused that dominion. Uh, but uh, he still wants us to participate, you know, in the authority that he has. Uh, and he is sharing, in one sense, his authority with us. Also, I'm reminded of the words of the prophet Samuel. I, 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 I Let me just... I don't have it on the screen, but, you know, when the prophet Samuel was uh, inaugurating the king Saul, uh, Saul now was chosen to be the king of Israel. And of course, it was the decision by the people of Israel that said, do you want a king? And God said, well, now that you're asking for a king, okay. Uh, he warned them that... Uh, uh, Things are not going to go right because of uh, an earthly king. They were rejecting God as king. But Samuel, as he was handing over the reins of Israel to Saul the king, uh, this is what he says in 1 Samuel chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 23. As for me, he says, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you. Now, when he says you, he's including Israel, of course, the nation, but he's also including the leadership. He's including Saul as king. Uh, and so Samuel feels that sometimes it could be sinful for us to desist from praying for our leaders, especially when our country is going through a very crucial time when we want to make sure that the rule of authority and the rule of justice the rule of law is maintained. Uh, and if we just don't want, bother to pray, uh, can it be sinful? I mean, uh, uh, I, I, I'm not, you know, judging anyone, but, <laughs> but it's a good thought for us to keep in mind that when our country is going through a crisis, don't forget to pray. And don't think your prayer is just too insignificant that it will not make any difference. So keep that in mind as we do that. So, uh, uh, let me just share a few more thoughts and then I'll open it up for some discussion. Then we'll just spend a few moments in prayer. Maybe a few of us can pray, especially for our country and, of course, the many countries that are uh, in crisis. Uh, you remember uh, uh, the apostle says, I urge you, 
that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving. Notice four different aspects of supplication that he mentions. Uh, and I ask myself, why would Paul use so many words? He says, petitions, prayers, intercessions, thanksgiving. Uh, I, I feel that is like a quadruple, you know, uh, emphasis. <laughs> he is emphasizing that need. You know, make sure you're petitioning, you are supplicating, you're praying, you're interceding. Uh, it's almost like a way to tell, urge you and encourage you. Don't, uh, you know, forget to pray. Don't forget to involve yourself in the affairs of your country, of your government. And the way we do it as Christians, as disciples of Jesus, is praying. And so, uh, uh, and so that is the thought that comes to my mind. Maybe you have something to add to it, so feel free to do it. But it's very interesting that he mentions petitions, prayers, intercessions, thanksgiving. And of course, thanksgiving, not just, uh, you know, praying to straighten the country out or the leadership out, but also thanking some of our good leaders. And we've had some very good leaders, you know, even in the ruling party, we've had good leaders uh, who have done well for our country. Uh, and, uh, and some of those leaders are brave and courageous uh, to stand up for certain issues and bring it up in parliament. And I think we should thank God for those people, right? Uh, you know, and one thing I have done specifically is praying for some of our journalists. You know, some of our journalists have gone through a very hard time. Some of them have been in prison. Some of them have been, cases have been registered against them. And some of them have been so courageous to stand up and bring up issues that needed discussion. And I prayed that God would protect them and grant them a platform so that their words could be uh, highlighted and heard by the larger community, the larger uh, citizenry of our country. And I think it has been heard. And the way people have voted, thankfully, uh, it shows that. Right? So we are told to pray for, of course, all people, because all people are precious for God, but for specifically kings and those in authority. Right? And when Paul was writing this, Caesar was ruling Rome. And at that time, Caesar was the God. And they were told to pray to Caesar. <laughs> But Paul inverts it and says, no, we pray to God for Caesar. <laughs> we, are going, we don't pray to Caesar, but we pray to our God who's above Caesar, but we are praying for Caesar. So that's very interesting, you know, that uh, we can uh, pray for our kings uh, uh, and to one who is above all those kings. Right. And then, he, and then uh, the apostle says, you know, uh, what what are we to pray for? That we may, uh, you know, live a quiet and peaceable life. In other words, we are not asking the government for favors, but we are only asking that the government will lead in a just manner so that we can live in peace. We can uh, continue to follow our faith. And there would be no restrictions. We would have a sense of freedom, freedom of conscience to make decisions and not be punished for it. And so God wants us to pray about that. And because God knows that these some of these freedoms are going to be restricted and affected. And so he wants us to be uh, uh, you know, mindful of those freedoms and not to take it for granted and to be thankful to God for the freedoms that we have. Right. We must also pray that uh, our leadership uh, will lead in a way where they will not abuse the people, abuse their power to crush people. You know, even as Isaiah says, you know, to exploit people that we, we shouldn't be exploiting people. Leaders must not, you know, uh, 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 take their uh, uh, their privilege of leadership to uh you know, bring strife and strike people with the wicked fists, as Isaiah says, right? Solomon, you know, when he became king and he was asked what he would want from God, you remember what he's asked for. 
you know, Solomon says, oh God, give the king your justice and the king's son your righteousness so that he may judge your people with righteousness. And notice this one. And your oppressed people with justice. Solomon want to rule in such a way that he would be able to remove the oppression, not bring oppression upon people. And we must pray and ask that God would restrain the hands of these leaders to oppress people, like many times that they are doing and we see around the world. We must pray for discernment and wisdom that these people will have. Because like I was saying earlier, some people are very honest and they want to do a good job, but many times they are constrained by, you know, affiliations and compulsions that God would give them not only discernment and wisdom, but courage to do uh, what is righteous, what is just, right? And of course, we must pray for their families, that they be blessed. Sometimes they are uh, also go through tremendous amount of, uh, you know, risks. Uh, some of them are targeted. Uh, we must pray that God would bring uh, a, you know, a blessing upon them as they lead righteously and in justice. Those are some of the thoughts I wanted to share with you uh, on this particular scripture. As much can be said. So what I want to do now is if you have any thoughts, please share it. And then shall we take a few moments to pray specifically for the new government that's going to be formed in India. And we want to include uh, other countries, like, for example, in the UK, there's going to be an election. Very soon in the USA, there's going to be an election. There are countries going through a tremendous amount of crisis. We can just include them all and uh, bring our petitions and intercessions to God. Any thoughts you'd like to share? Any comments you would like to make on uh, some of my sharings with you? Bertie, go ahead. Thank you so much for expounding those the scriptures which you uh, touched upon. And uh, very, very helpful, very uh, uh, giving us, you know, uh, some of the points, uh, you know, to pray about, etc. But uh, how about us as born again, you know, children of God and our children of God who have Christ in us and we become lights as God says, you are the light of the world. And in a one scripture, it says, if I'm right, if I'm quoting uh, correctly, it says light dispels darkness, right? Uh, Zechariah uh, somewhere, or maybe, uh, I don't know whether, but light, <laughs> light the dispels gospel of John. darkness. Yeah. yeah. So we as uh, lights, uh, you know, we have to be, uh, uh, we have to, you know, <laughs> keep that in mind, you know, knowing that Christ is in us. And besides, of course, the points you mentioned, very helpful and very it guides us in praying and trusting God and doing our part. Of yeah. My point is doing our respective parts, you know, to uh, uh, living the kingdom ways and allowing Christ through us to dispel yeah. the darkness, which God says the, the world the world is in darkness, you know, and right. and uh, all this corrupt, corrupt, corruption is, uh, yes. you know, seen. Seen. <laughs> and uh, burdens people you know yeah. so that's my point we have our part to 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 you know to besides praying and trusting very very important our lives our lives should be contributing uh helping helping in uh, uh, helping this world in a way you know pointing them certainly. to God and certainly yeah. to be lights is uh, is uh, the mandate given to us and of course we can we are lights because Jesus is the light of the world and he is in us. And so we become lights because of Jesus. Right. Excellent. Yeah. Good. Thanks for, uh, you know, uh, the fact that some of those comments were useful and helpful. Any other, anyone like to just share? Otherwise, uh, uh, I, I would like to end with a prayer, but uh, may I request uh, some of you maybe to just pray. And I, I specifically want to keep India in mind. A new government is going to be formed in the next uh, week or so, I would think, or even short, uh, lesser than that. Uh, maybe Bertie can pray, and uh, I certainly want Franklin to pray. I'm not sure Surya Murthy would like to join in, but you're welcome. Uh, Anil Arika can join in. 
uh, Vanessa, if you would like to pray, uh, feel free. And once you do it, and then you can, and then I would uh, end with a general prayer for everyone. So, um, shall we begin with Bertie? Go ahead, Bertie, if you can pray, especially for our country, you know, for our yes. government. Yes, let's bow our heads in prayer. Father God, we are so thankful and grateful to you that you are overall in charge. You are the king of creation. Uh, uh, that you, Lord, you raise up kings and you bring down kings. You have, like, of one blood, you made the nations of men to dwell upon the face of the earth and setting bound the habitation, and that they must seek God, if happily we may find him, for he is not far from any of us, but our sins have separated us from our God, so that he will not hear. Oh, Father God, you have called us out, and you have given us your Holy Spirit, Lord, uh, Christ indwelling in us, Lord, making us your children, and uh, Lord, uh, and Lord, uh, partaking of your divine life and nature, Lord, in Christ and participating also in mission and ministry. You have this blessing and Lord, you can use us as your people, Lord. And you want us, as we just heard in, uh, and uh, expounded by a pastor, Mr. Zachariah, mentioning the points of prayer, which are very, very helpful, Lord. And you would want us to be faithful in that and doing our part as lights, Father. We just want to uh, Lord, uh, mentioned that you address the rulers directly. Rulers of men should rule justly um, in the fear of God and hating covetousness. So, Lord, we make that our prayer that you have just blessed us with the general elections, Lord. And you have heard a prayer, as Mr. Zechariah acknowledged, Lord, that you have brought forth a government, Lord, where, um, where the BJP doesn't have unbridled power, so to speak, and the Lord uh, even tampering with the constitution and have any designs as such, using a brute majority lot to bring about changes which could, uh, one way or the other, affect us, Lord, in exercising our faith, living out our faith, Lord, and propagating our faith and being lights, Lord. Thank you so much. We thank you, Lord, for that you have heard our prayer in that respect and that you have blessed us. We only, uh, Lord, we humbly pray that you are overall, Lord, you are the God of all the earth, the living true God, Lord, and you put down and raise up another. And Lord, we pray, be with this uh, people in authority, Lord, so that we, uh, as the scripture says, we can live quiet and peaceful lives, Lord, and, uh, and living, your, living your way of life, kingdom ways, Lord, that not only us, but uh, the others in our country may be praying, Lord and blessing our country and remembering them that they may govern justly, uh, Lord, in the fear of God, hating covetousness. Thank you, Father, for this. We are grateful for this recently concluded general elections, Lord. Help those people in power and uh, help your people Lord, who are called by your name to, Lord, be lights and, uh, Lord, be, be, Lord, walking in the truth of Jesus. Please help us all, Lord, as your people. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. We pray this prayer, Father, in Jesus' holy and blessed name. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Bertie. Uh, maybe Anil or Rekha, would you go, go next? <laughs> yeah, I can pray for the countries. <clears throat> yeah. Let's bow our heads. <clears throat> oh, great God Almighty, ruler of heaven and earth and your whole creation, we bow before you, Lord. Praying, Father, for peace and for succor and, and peace all over, Father. Right now, Lord, the world is in upheaval. There are a lot of problems going on all over the world, Father. Most of all, Lord, we pray for the right and proper leadership, Lord. Leadership of nation, leadership that is good, clean, honest, strong, capable, and most of all, righteous, Father, that has the interest of the country, the whole country, and not in, Lord, fulfilling its own selfish desires. Yeah. So we pray for such leadership, Father. And we pray for all nations that are going through troubled times, Father. We're very grateful for the elections that happened in India, Father. And we just pray, may this leadership now rule the country with, uh, uh, with righteousness, with, uh, Lord, proper uh, <clears throat> attention and not, uh, Father, um, going haywire and doing its own thing, Father, because, Lord, there are all kinds of people, multifaceted country, and we pray, may the government have the interest of all at heart, Father, and show no favoritism and show no, and, and, and we pray for particularly the 
reporters, the journalists, father, who, mm. who try to keep them in line, strengthen them, and help them to speak out boldly, but at the same time, protect them, father. For the governments can really be nasty sometimes. So please, yeah. God, do, do, uh, do restrain our leadership from going out of the way, father, and keep yeah. them on the straight and narrow. Lord, where we would like to pray for some other countries where situations are really going very bad. We pray for the people of Palestine who are locked in a battle there for Lord. Intervene and let peace return to those troubled lands and look after the people there. We pray for Sudan, which is also having some civil war. The two generals are fighting and people are being killed left, right and center. Please let peace return there. And of course, Ukraine is always in the news. Father, it's a story of Goliath versus David. We please pray, Lord, that let the right leadership come that, that restores peace, Father, and let protect the people, Lord. And Lord, there are other situations. There's Afghanistan going through a bad situation. They had floods and people are hurting. Haiti is in total confusion, Father. We pray for these countries for peace, for the right leadership. And may they may you direct them to really bring peace to these countries, Father. There are so many other countries that are hurting in the Middle East, Father, Syria, Libya, um, Yemen, Father. And Lord, apart from these, there are other despot leaders. And we just pray, please put your restraints on them and give us the right and proper leadership that really cares for the people, Father. And help us to do our part. We pray and lift these leaders, Father, that you may give them wisdom and give them the the right attitude to govern the people rightly, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. In all this, we pray, Father, that may your will be done and may your people, Father, have peace and quiet the world over. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. We pray and ask all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen, Amen. indeed. Amen. Yes, uh, that analogy of uh, Goliath and uh, uh, David is so, <laughs> so apt. Right. Yes. yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Vanessa, would you like to pray? Uh, here's your opportunity. <laughs> uh, I, Pastor, would like to pray. Yes, please uh, pray and do pray for our country also. And let's close our eyes and let's be guided. They has God said He sends the Spirit to help us in our thoughts, words, and actions. And God has his plans for each and every person, each and every family and the country and in the whole world. He has his plans. And uh, yeah, we want change. We want to go according to our plans. But uh, we also pray that he gives us the patience and the ability to have patience with the leaders whom he will guide in his way. He will send the Holy Spirit on them. And maybe they will do according to his will. Let us play, uh, pray first for peace in our own heart, mind, body and souls. Then in the families also, there are so many families also who are going through difficult times. Let there be peace in the families. Let there be peace in the country and then in the whole world. Father Jesus, we ask you to please hear our prayers. We all have difficulties and we ask you to hear our prayer and grant our petitions. In Lord Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, so many of you. So much of our people everywhere. Yeah. Surimurti, would you like to offer a prayer? I'm not sure if your connection is okay. <laughs> right. I can't, I'm not sure if Surimurti has heard us. Uh, Sir, can I come? Can I please come in? Yeah, please go ahead, Franklin. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Now let's pray. Almighty God, our loving Father, gracious Lord, thank you, Father, for your precious gift of life you give us, taking care of us, sustaining us. Most of all, Lord, the knowledge and understanding of who you are, a God of compassion, a God of love, a God who has our best interests at heart, even in this time and generation. Thank you, Lord for giving us an opportunity to know that we are your dear children. Lord, I join my brothers and sisters, Father, in praying for our nation. Lord, man by nature, Lord, is inherently 
evil. We live, we are having a fallen nature and we live in a broken yes. world. And so it is very difficult, Lord, to do what is right. Lord, moreover, when you, when a person is endowed with powers, there is a tendency, Lord, to misuse it or abuse it. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to come and to pray, to ask your intervention, Lord. Lord, we remember all our leaders at the national level. Be with them, Lord, as a new government is being formed and take care of them. Lord, governing a nation of over a billion people is really tough. Father, we ask, Lord, that you will give us good leaders, leaders who will walk in the integrity of their heart and who will fear you and do what is right in your sight. Lord, we ask your blessings upon them. Lord, have mercy upon all our minorities, all our Christians, all, all our people. As people, Lord, sometimes we don't do what is right. Yet, Father, we pray that you will be gracious to us and bless us. Thank you, Lord. Lord, as we pray for our nation, we also remember the many, many countries, Lord, who will be going for elections. I understand, Lord, even UK is slated, Lord, that you will take care of the elections in UK, in USA. Father, may you, we ask, Lord, that you grace be with those people. And surely, Lord, you will have mercy on all the people. Lord, we also want to remember the people of Ukraine. Technically, still they are at war. Lord, have mercy on them and will bring peace. Lord, we also pray for the land of the people in Gaza, that you will bring peace. And Lord, may your grace continue to be with all people all over the world. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we ask all this. Amen. 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 Thank you, Franklin. Yes. Surimurti, would you like to offer a short prayer? <laughs> no? Okay. 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 Uh, no force. Of course, I won't put Sanjira on the spot. <laughs> right? But yes. Uh, but thank you all so much for praying. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Rekha, please. Rekha, yes. Eternal Father, Almighty God, we thank you for everything, Father. You have promised so much to us, Father. You've given your grace to us. And we are really, really grateful. And throughout history, Father, throughout all the kingdoms, you've always been with your people. Please, Father, at this time we come before you, now when everything seems to be in a turmoil, to be able to uh, go through it all, Father. You are always with us, but no matter, it's when, when things seem, seem so bleak and dark, Father, please help us to keep our light shining and to do your will, Father, in everything. We thank you, Father, for everything, and we ask all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you. And Amen. let me Amen. end with a general prayer. Join me. Loving, gracious Father, as I join my brothers and sisters, I come to lift our beloved country where we were born and uh, where we reside and we live. And we thank you so much for remembering us in this country, India. Uh, with the general elections, we believe it was a crucial one. We thank you for the outcome. We don't know how things are going to pan out as the new government is formed. But we pray that the deliberations will be for the betterment of our nation and our people. If our current prime minister is going to continue, we pray for him that your uh, blessings, your wisdom, your discernment, your fear will be upon him. That he will remember that he is ruling. Uh, and his rulership has been given by you. And let him not forget that, Lord. And so we commit him into your hands for that uh, help that he needs. We pray that uh, our journalists and all of those who participate in democracy will be protected. All our parliamentarians will come now and rule the nation with a sense of justice. Uh, and uh, the problems that we face uh, in the country will be tackled and taken care of. Even as I commit uh, our country into your hands, I remember the USA, and in November there will be an election there, and uh, it 
all moving towards uh, a sense of confusion. We don't know exactly how things will go because there's so much of division. There is so much of delusion. People are not able to see issues as they need to see it. I pray, Lord, that you will remove that blanket of blindness and deception and help people to understand uh, what mm -hmm. and who they should vote into power. And so I commit uh, USA into your hands and all the countries uh, especially mentioned here in, this, in these prayers. And we thank you that you give us this privilege of uh, sharing with you, Lord, and participating with you in your decisions that you make as the King of the universe, as the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have all authority in heaven and in earth. We thank you, Lord. We bow our heads to you. We bow our knees to you. And we pray and long for the time that your kingdom in all its fullness will be established. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. And with this, we do it in the authority in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Uh, before we, yeah, uh, uh, let me just uh, just mention this, Bertie, and then I'll just come to you. Before, um, you know, you know um, uh, we end here, I would like you, if, if you can just take, uh, you know, five minutes to read Psalm 72. Uh, this what? is, Psalm 72 is David's prayer for Solomon, you know, as David was growing old and Solomon was going to take the throne. David prays that Solomon will rule in a righteous manner. And I thought some of the words and wordings are so beautifully mentioned. Actually, the fulfillment of Psalm 72 will only be in Jesus Christ. Because all those things mentioned, ultimately Christ will fulfill. So as we end, make sure that you just take a few moments to read Psalm 72. Uh, and uh, uh, just to help you sensitize even more what kind of leadership God wants our, uh, you know, countries to be ruled by. Yeah, so I thought I'll just mention that. Bertie, go ahead. You had a, co a comment. I uh, I just I just uh, could catch on on uh, uh, Mr. Poppins uh, while praying. He mentioned the term grace. Very yeah. important, uh, brethren, that we know that grace. And in messages that I've heard on YouTube and all, one one, um, uh, it was mentioned that grace is power of God. We mentioned unmerited pardon, but grace is power. So the Lord Jesus Christ has the power of God, our living God and everlasting King has the power, the grace to touch people and, you know, and faith, of course. He says, grace is, the, you know, uh, power of God towards us. And he says, faith is us believing God and believing it. So uh, let's let's remember, uh, yeah, let's remember grace and faith uh, that can help people, the leadership, and help us as men, women, you know, and particularly called out ones uh, yeah. belonging to the Lord, you know, to make to uh, to sort of uh, to impact impact people, uh, yeah. you know, you, in, uh, you know, in nearby, you know, around about us and wherever. Uh, Thank so you. I, so I'll just mention that. Yeah. Thank you, Bertie. Uh, only in the grace of God. <laughs> but for the grace of God, we are nothing. For the grace of God. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, certainly we'll keep that in mind. Any final thoughts or comments? <clears throat> and uh, even as we conclude, uh, continue to pray <laughs> for our leaders, especially yes. here in our country as this government's form. Now, the coalition government has to form. Uh, and uh, we don't know you know, how these things will be done. But we just pray that uh, God maintains that sense of control and direct these people to uh, bring righteous government. Okay. Well, pretty, situation is pretty serious in this country too, in USA, <laughs> you know, because, you know, I mean, one party is just making, you know, uh, declaring right and wrong and wrong as right. And, you know, um, yeah, they're saying evil is good and e good is evil. It's literally that's what's happening. Yeah. And you were right in praying that give them discernment to see this, you know, and 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 act accordingly. Otherwise, this country is going to be in big trouble. 
Uh, certainly, yes. I think uh, we can keep, uh, you know, because, I mean, uh, Anil and Rekha lives in the U.S. We've got a big church there. Our headquarters is there. and We yeah. have brethren, you know, uh, who are GCI. So we want to pray for USA so that they will continue to lead and be the leader that they have been. Yes, so we will remember that. And I think uh, some of you mentioned uh, Gaza and uh, what is happening in Palestine. I mean, yeah. my heart... I, I... Yeah, every time I see the news, my heart bleeds because yes. people are being killed left, right. And I don't know if any of those hostages are left alive. There are yeah. 100 plus hostages who are still not released and we are so sin for them. <laughs> So, yeah, let's continue to pray for all of these people, you know, and uh, pray that God's kingdom will just finally descend here on this earth. Right? Any, any I think, uh, Bertie, you, uh, you have yeah. one, more, one more thought for us? Yes. Uh, I just pray for relief for us all from the heat. Uh, yeah. By, yeah, by God. By the east, west, north, or south. <laughs> Yeah. You know, you know, climate change is, uh, you know, right. yeah, uh, is big. And we also pray, and we also pray that Jesus comes soon. That's very <laughs> important. <laughs> indeed, indeed, yes, yes. Uh, Jesus Himself said, "Pray that <laughs> Thy kingdom come." So, yeah, let's continue to pray for that. Pray that we none of us are left out. <laughs> sir, I have one question, sir. Yes, Franklin, go ahead. Sir, excuse me, please. Question, sir, for you and for everyone to comment. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, can a non Christian can a can a non Christian understand what is righteousness and justice? Uh, uh, my yeah. thought is, my thought is that uh, yes, he can because uh, he right. has a conscience. He's made in the image right. of God. That's right. And yeah. all, and also. Uh, the Holy Spirit is now poured upon all flesh and the Holy Spirit can help him to discern what is righteousness and what is justice. And so our leaders especially are targeted by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit especially have them in mind and he will guide them and lead them. So that's my sh simple but short answer. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Can I just come in? Go ahead. Uh, yes. It's mentioned in the Holy Scriptures in the epistles that uh, God is waiting for the number of Gentiles to come in and uh, and that the offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable to God and then shall all Israel will be saved. For it is written, you know, the deliverer will come forth from Zion and turn away <laughs> ungodliness from Jacob. So, you know, we have, yeah. you know, there is, let's pray yeah. you know, that uh, uh, right. we uh, you know, they have uh, many turning, turning out, being drawn by God. You know, as you said, the Holy Spirit is at work, and uh, uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's be reminded ourselves that we are part of the you know kingdom, kingdom people, part of the king, uh, way of the kingdom life, and way of right. Christ. Christ is like uh, we are conduits, or we are uh, we are you know the body of Christ. You know, spiritually. Thank and you, Bertie, for bringing prophecy in. Yes, but that prophecy will be fulfilled one way or the other. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But yes. Thank you. Right. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Have a good rest of the day. God bless you all. And we will see you sometime, somewhere or the other soon. <laughs> yes. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. God bless. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. God bless. Bye-bye.